Let's talk about connecting with your inner child because it seems like that's a big part of your story and it, you're, you seem very connected with that side of you. What advice do you have for people who feel very disconnected from their inner child and how do you start reconnecting? I think it's remembering what things really lit you up when you were little. What were you excited by when you were little? Did you like to explore in nature and like ride your bike? Um, did you like to play a certain game? Did you like to spend time with animals? Did you like a certain type of craft or activity? So I think it's just returning to those childhood memories and remembering, but also trying new things as well. And I think it's all about being playful. So like try, like find more play in your life and do things that you don't usually would deem as productive. Because when you're little, when you're a child, you don't care about productivity. You just follow what is fun, right? So it's literally just doing things that are fun. But as adults, we're just obsessed with being productive, which is like so yeah. destructive. <laughs> but yeah, of course, we have to be to survive in society. But also, yeah, allow actually carve out time to do things that are fun and playful without them being productive. Do you have examples of how you do this in your life? Like let's maybe a week in your life, how often are you working and how often do you make time for like other things like joy? It depends if I am actively working on a certain project, how busy work is, but every day I try to find something that brings me joy, even if it's like just a beach walk at a dog beach where I get to see all the dogs and pat them. Oh. I'm really lucky <laughs> to have beautiful friends here who are interested in the same things as me, who also really value inner child connections. So we laugh a lot. You know, we play, you know, we have nature days where we all bring our um, artsy things, clay, you know, painting stuff, watercolors, and we just have these little nature play dates, which is what kids would do, right? They would just create That's together. so cute. That's rare to hear as an adult. <laughs> it also depends on where you live. Like, can you, do you have the nature around you or the friends around you <laughs> with the same hobbies? Definitely. I think, yeah, community is definitely very, very important. And being able to have these little play dates with your friends who also value in a child and just laugh together and be silly. And um, yeah, just... You mentioned that you moved to this this new city in Australia. I already forgot the name. <laughs> you mentioned you moved to this new place because it has a creative community. Um, tell me about that decision. Like, did you already have friends there, or? Yeah. So I currently live near Byron Bay, which is you know known for their <laughs> hippie community, very surfy. Um, lots of entrepreneurs, lots of creative people, which is great. You know, none of my friends have nine to five jobs they all have their own their own things which is super cool but don't get me wrong nine to five jobs are super important and I needed in this society too <laughs> but I first actually traveled to this area in 2016 a couple of months after I started Dreamy Moons so I still had my little Etsy shop up and I went on my very first solo adventure when I was I think I was um 20 yeah. Wow. And um, I just fell in love with this area. I was traveling by myself. And, you know, when you travel by yourself, you just meet the coolest people. You just somehow attract these really cool opportunities. And I just remember lying on the beach and just thinking to myself, wow, like this feels like home. I feel like I will live here one day, even though it was like on the other side of Australia to where I was from, which is Adelaide. And I returned a few times since then. I didn't know many people. Um, so I actually initially moved to this area with my partner at the time four years ago. And then we split up after a year of living together. And I've just been, you know, loving it ever since. Like you've made your own friends since then. Yeah, I met a really beautiful group of women like a week after I moved here four years ago. Nice. <laughs> like, and I'm still friends with them to this day. And then, of course, like met many more people since then. And yeah, it's, yeah, I'm so, so grateful for this community and this sisterhood that I feel like I didn't really have in Adelaide. So I really, really miss that. And now, yeah, my heart is feeling very nourished. <laughs> oh. 
I love hearing that. And I, I ask you about that because I know it's going to be very inspiring for our listeners to hear because I think environment is such a huge part of our soul nourishing environment and community, right? So sometimes you live in a place where you don't feel connected to the people or the lifestyle and like to hear that you know, what you've done, like it's possible. You can find a place where you feel like you can find your people and and that's what you've done. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very grateful. Um, definitely. I suggest going to events that you are interested in, like, you know, like women's circles, kind of small social things where you can really meet like-minded people and really putting yourself out there. Workshops, full moon circles or whatever you into any kind of like, you know, book clubs or anything like that. Yeah, put yourself into those group things and group events. Yeah, yeah, love it. What would you consider like one of the biggest challenges that you had to overcome in your art career or business that you'd like to share? Yes, actually, it's about money. <laughs> I I didn't grow up with money, so I was taught from a very young age to save everything. And I would get a tiny bit of pocket money and I would save every single thing when I was little. And I would just be like so proud of myself. I remember when I was little, it took me like, (laughs) it took me like three years to save what would be 30 Australian dollars. (laughs) And I was so proud of myself. And then I just spent it all on like lollies. (laughs) But but basically, yeah, as a, as a teenager as well, I had a couple, um, jobs in like hospitality like subway (laughs) making sandwiches Mm -hmm. yeah and I was so good at saving because yeah I was in that mindset of like I have to save everything so when I first started dreaming moons I had to learn how to spend money and it was really difficult it was difficult to be honest yeah because obviously you have to invest into your business uh, to then to for it to be business even you know you have to spend money so for me letting go of those precious savings and you know it was a risk as well it's a risk every time you know I print you know for example a thousand Aphrodite journals and I have to pay for that up front believing that okay that will go well they will sell so for me the lesson was to be able to let go of money um to allow money in so it's like a it's a flow right you have to free that flow and to free that flow you have to give to receive. So true. I love that. What new projects or I guess future areas of exploration are you excited about now? Like, do you have any goals for the future of Dreamy Moons? Definitely. Well, in the very near future, I've got my 2025 diaries coming out on the 1st of September, which are all about astrology and mindfulness and self-reflection and intention setting, which I'm nice. very excited about, called Year of Growth. And then in also in the near future, I am opening a warehouse in Amsterdam to cover European orders. So that's a whole, yeah, that's a whole new step. But I'm also really, really excited about doing more events and retreats. Like what kind of events and retreats? Tell us more. (laughs) Yeah. So the workshops that I did a couple of months ago, as I said earlier, it was about going through your mind garden, your heart cave and your soul. So it was a very visual journey. And in each one of those realms, you did um, activities. So in the mind garden, you pulled out limiting beliefs that are weeds. In the heart cave, you healed the broken heart crystals. In the soul, you connected with the universe and, you know, sent your manifestations into the abyss. So it's really, it's really, really fun. It's like an inner child connection, but also a deeper journey. It's pretty much as deep as you want to make it. So I would love to continue those. I would love to come to the States maybe next year to bring those workshops there. But for the retreats, I would love to dedicate one whole day to the mind garden because there's so much you can do there, you know, with the limiting beliefs and intention and reflection and inner child connection too. And then an entire day for the heart. So opening your heart and you can also, you know, include yoga, like heart opening, flows and everything. And obviously lots of art. And then a whole day for the soul and maybe a fourth day to integrate all all three so I love imagination it. would be the the major part of 
of、uh, retreats, imagination, and healing yourself and navigating your inner world through imagination. I love it, and I love hearing your passion when you speak about how excited you are <laughs> for these future events. I think that's what truly shines through, and so people feel that, and that's why it resonates. <laughs>